When you're an artist, you never stop improving. There's never a point where you say, okay, I'm done, I've learned it all. There are people that message me every day in my Discord asking for opinions on their art. Regardless of the art and the subject of itself, there are always two things you can improve on forever. That is your camera work and your lighting. No matter how good you get at those two things, you can always improve because the space is ever changing. So in this video, I wanna break down a couple of tricks that you can use to have better camera work. But before we get started today, I'd like to take a second to talk about this video's sponsor. No, dude, why is this always happening? What is that? What the? <laughs> oh, dude, where am I? Hey, man, uh -huh. who are you? What, what is this? I'm your Wondershare Demo Creator avatar, and welcome to, well, Demo Creator. What is Demo Creator? Oh, dude, Demo Creator is an all-in-one screen capture, video editor, and video presentation application. Wait, really? This can do all that? Yeah, man, and so much more. Did you know that with Demo Creator, you can record your screen, webcam, and microphone all at the same time, then instantly export that footage for editing? How about real-time screen drawing during recordings to make sure your viewers never miss a thing? Another misselling? Who's that? You can even use Demo Creator to auto-generate subtitles so your viewers won't miss a thing. Oh. Okay. So with all those features, it has to be pretty pricey, right? No, that's the best part. It's budget-friendly and easy to use. There's even a version that's free to try. So if you want, you can open up this video's description and click my affiliate link and give it a try. What are you, what are you doing right there? Who, who are you talking to? The audience, man. There's an audience? Thank you to Wondershare Demo Creator for sponsoring this video. So let's say you've got a simple scene set up and you wanna know where to start. Now usually when I'm making a scene, I have an idea from the very beginning what I want the shot to look like, but sometimes I get to the end and I go, okay, things are different than how I'd imagine them to be. I need to know what I'm doing with my camera. The first thing I always do from there is check the motion of my scene. From here, we've downloaded this base walking animation from Mixamo, and you can see that we're moving through these like, you know, very simple scene, just rings on the ground, right? So we're gonna hop in my camera. I have fly turned on. Uh, if you don't have it turned on, you should turn it on in your settings. It's super useful. Definitely one of my most favorite things about Blender. And the first thing I'm gonna do is find decent framing for our shot. You know, whether you're using rule of thirds or a golden ratio or just guidelines, whatever it is, find you know your your kind of lineup for where you wanna be, your framing. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go something like this. And something that I find is super helpful with my framing is coming down here under the camera settings that are viewport display and turning this up to one. It just helps me kind of focus my shot a little bit better and keeps me focused on what I wanna be looking at. The next step is something that I see beginners skip over constantly, and that is messing with your camera settings. When someone sends me a, a render, an animation, motion design, whatever, and I can tell immediately that they did not adjust the camera settings, I know that they are in the beginning stages of their 3D work. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of good to branch off from that at some point. So in your camera settings, you have type, which is per perspective, orthographic, and panoramic. Perspective is your default. Orthographic is kind of a flat view. Um, you can use this for isometric renders. It's super helpful for st stuff like that, sorry. Um, and then panoramic, obviously, uh, everybody's taken a panoramic pho photo on their phone before. But what's fun is if you are in cycles, you can get some extra settings under panoramic. You have this setting, panorama type. And this is only going to be available if you're in rendered view. So if we switch over to rendered view, we can see that we have these super wide angles going on. And in a previous render, this is how I got that super fisheye look. You can achieve some very, very cool things with these settings just by playing around a little bit. However, for this video, we're gonna to stick to perspective because what I really wanna focus on is camera rigging. There are a lot of add-ons that allow you to rig your camera. However, for most things that you would ever use, you can do it with primitives in Blender internally for free. And I'm gonna show you how. There are a few different ways to do this. The first one that I'm going to show you is this kind of dolly cam circular tracking shot. You will see this style of shot a lot in MoGraph pieces um, and it's super easy to achieve. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna spawn in ourselves a curve and we are gonna scroll up because mine's, I have all the extra objects on and we're gonna drop in a circle. We're gonna scale this up a little bit and we are going to place this in the center of our man here. Then with our circle selected, we are gonna come to our constraints tab. We are gonna add a child of and we are gonna select the armature. 
Now, depending on what bone you select here, you're going to get different kind of bounciness with the camera and things of that nature. Um, so be careful with that one. For ours, I think we are going to go with one of the spines, something that is a little bit lower down, preferably. We don't want too much camera shake going on. We can see that there's quite a bit there. So maybe even one of the, the neck bones. So yeah, I can see the neck has a little bit less shake going on. It's a little bit more even overall. So we're going to take this and we are just going to move it back down and back into the center over our guy again. Now we're going to click our camera and we are going to add a constraint to this as well we are going to add a follow path constraint and under our target we're going to select our curve and you just drag that camera back in and place it along the curve uh, just get it a little bit closer to where you want your framing to be we're going to add one more constraint to that and that is the track two constraint and for this one we are also going to select the armature and we're going to set this to whatever bone we have parented to our rig gear. and now you can see that we are following along with our camera completely constrained to him but if we come to our camera, we can go to our offset setting and follow path and move our camera around our character and he will continue to follow him. So let's set a keyframe at the beginning and then move our camera around something like this maybe, go to the end and play our animation. It's very fast. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna move this keyframe down there and I'm going to set these to linear and this should slow us down enough so we can really see what's going on here. But you can see we have this tracking shot that's locked to our camera very, very easily for free with no add-ons, no nothing. And now we can come back into our camera settings and play with our focal length. Maybe we want to animate this. So we, you know, set a keyframe, come down to here and we can pull in like this maybe and set these to linear as well. And yeah, we've got kind of a cool thing going on here. However, there are some limitations to this method. Once you have this camera set to track two, you no longer have control over your rotational values. So unfortunately, that means that sometimes your framing is kind of stuck, but I wanna show you a way around this. So I just deleted everything out of that scene and we're starting over with just our base camera. And now I wanna show you my second method for camera rigging, which I don't see a lot of people doing in Blender. You see a lot of it in Cinema 4D. Um, I think that's just because of the way that uh, MoGraph is more populated in that software. And this is definitely something that gets used in the MoGraph industry a lot more, but it's super helpful. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna spawn in a cube and on our cube, we are going to add a constraint. We are going to add a track two constraint. We're gonna set it to our armature. Let's set it again to our neck, just so we're staying consistent. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click our camera and add a child of constraint and we're gonna attach it to our cube. So what this does now is if I have my cube selected, I can move it anywhere in my scene and my camera stays looking at my object, but I also have full control over my rotation values. I also have control over my location values, which means that this camera is parented, but we still have the ability to add that kind of man-made element to the animation. So with this setup right now, we can go ahead and kind of position our camera off like this maybe, and we're gonna put a keyframe on our cube's uh, location and rotation. Then we're gonna come down to the end, and maybe we'll do something uh, kind of like this maybe? And we'll set it like that so that we're following along a little bit better. We're going to set our cubes rotation and location to linear because that is the movement within the scene and our keyframes on the camera itself. We can go in and add eases to and kind of help out with the motion of the shot. I find that this setup works phenomenal. So let's go ahead and get our framing set up here. Maybe I want a little bit of an angle with this guy. I also want to adjust our focal length so that we're in a little bit further. Oh, a little bit too close there. Um, Maybe something like this would be kind of neat. I think we can go over a little bit more, something like that. Again, location and rotation. Now we're gonna come down to our end and we're also going to animate our focal length because I can see we're getting a little bit close there. Um, so let's pull out something like this and just redo, realign just a little bit to make sure our framing's still good. And yeah, there we go. Now we have the same kind of like tracking motion shot where we're locked to our object, but we have full control over our camera. Now there are a few more things that we can do for further control in the scene. Let's say we don't like the bouncing of being attached to one of the bones. We can actually remove that constraint from the bone itself and just be attached to the armature. With that, we come in and we reposition our camera. And with a few adjustments to our camera angle, we can play this back now and you can see that we have no more bumping up and down with the neck bone and we just have a like a steady follow shot. However, this is a little bit over complicated. If you wanted to do this, you could probably just do it with the camera but it would make animating the keyframes a little bit easier because let's be honest nobody loves coming over to the graph editor and seeing six different things that they have to animate for the camera and moving them all individually and then hoping that once they've moved one they all line up and nothing's you know
know, all screwed up. This method does limit it so you only have to control the rotation, which is a lot easier than controlling the rotation and the location if you're not super confident with that. It also just makes it faster, which is kind of key in our industry. I've used these camera rigs on almost every project that I've worked on for the last year, and I can tell you with beyond a shadow of a doubt, they have saved my ass so many times. They're so helpful. They're also super simple to set up and completely free, so I would definitely take advantage of them and just add it to your tool belt. It's something that you can break out whenever you need it, and it's great. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to my patrons for supporting me and making this a little bit easier of a process for me to do every week. Also, thank you to Wondershare Demo Creator for sponsoring this video. If you guys want, you guys can go down to my description and click my affiliate link and see what that's all about. And yeah, I will see you all again very, very soon.